Hi guys, welcome back to the shop again. <coughs> um, today we're not doing an unboxing video or a build video. Today we're actually going to be repairing my new lathe. Now, I've only had it a couple of weeks and pretty much from day one what was happening was is that when there was a little bit of load on the headstock um, the power would start to drop and you could see on the, the meter that the, the revolutions were getting lower and lower and lower and lower. It didn't happen every time and I thought to begin with it was a feature that if if you were putting too much pressure on the on the headstock that it was reducing the speed for us um, turns out that wasn't the case, it turned out to be a faulty module for the uh, control um, when I tried to do some turning last weekend um, what was happening was even with no load on the, the headstock so there was no belt um, the, the power was only going up to about 300 rpm and then it was dropping down again um, so I got in touch with the manufacturer who have kindly just sent me a new replacement module and we're going to fit that to the new lathe today so I thought I'd show you the process. Stick around I'll see you in a bit. So you can see here that we've got the belt on the right hand belt which is the fastest belt setting. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just close the cover off, we'll power it up and I'll show you the power dropping off there. Okay so I've got the switch turned up to its maximum setting so we'll, we'll crank this up now. It should go to about 4000 rpm and stay there. Drop already. You can hear it. It's going slower, and slower, and slower, and slower. So we're going to replace the module now and see how it goes. So this is the new control box. Um, it's held on by a couple of screws here. There. Um, <coughs> it's got the straightforward plugs in at the back. And then it's got this wire here with a quick pin and I think that goes to the motor. So what we'll do first of all is we're just going to drag this up, we'll, crack, we'll uh, take these screws out, we'll drop them. Okay so what I've done now is I've flipped the blade upside down, I've taken the tail stock off and the tool rest, flipped it upside down on sitting on these axle stands with a 2x4 for, for, uh, to keep the metal okay and that's sitting there nice. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to start peeling these wires back and getting this box off. We'll see where this wire goes. I'm still intrigued as to where this goes. So there's a, there's a catch here. Ah, okay. So it seems to have some shrink wrap here at the motor. So I'm just going to get my blade will very carefully peel some of the shrink wrap away. I've got some more to put in. I'll just get me blade. It's a bit awkward, I have to say. Now, I've decided to take the motor off purely because I can't really get down to the wires inside underneath this motor. There's not much room, and what I don't want to do is break the wires going to the, um, to the display, because that would just be counterproductive. So I'm just going to take the belt off, put that to one side, and I'm just going to take well, that was a bit loose. That should just be now these three screws to rehang the new motor, uh, the new control unit.
and there's the old one off and we'll put in the new one the trick to do in these jobs as well is not to tighten up all of these screws all at once until you've got them all in and then you can tighten them up We used to have a little black and decker power, dr uh, power driver. It wasn't a drill, it was like a very small powered screwdriver. For ideal for these jobs because there wasn't that much torque in the motor so you wouldn't over tighten it. But it saves on the elbow grease. I'd say these have never had new threads cut into the mountains before so but a bit tight. Thought that was a loose wire then, it's actually just a piece of plastic insulator. Put that there, and then we'll just put a little bit of heat to that just to melt that down a little bit. Right, now let's play that game of Hunt the Tools. Now we don't want it too tight because if we tighten it up too much then you can't do the tension on it, that's why it wasn't tight before. Just back that off. A little bit more. A little bit more. Oh, that's perfect. And then we'll just put the screw back in. Put the belt back on.
Right, now then. I'll plug that. And I'll plug the motor into the control unit. And then we'll just tidy that up a little bit and reclamp. Okay, moments of truth as we'll uh, plug the power cord in. Hopefully it won't go bang. We're good. We hasn't exploded into a ball of fire. It's always a good start. I'm going to turn that down to its lowest setting. Okay, start it up. Okay, so she's at its lowest setting. And she's staying up. So we'll turn it up now to its max. Right, we seem to be fluctuating a little bit, but nothing too bad. It's holding its revs up though, so that's the bonus. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put the tail stock on, I'm just going to put the chuck on, put a bit of weight on and make sure that that doesn't affect anything. Okay guys, that's it. Uh, we are back in action, the lathe is up and running again. It didn't take that long, it took about 20 minutes tops. Um, just to figure out where the wire went was the hardest part I think. Um, big thank you to McQuillanstools.ie, um, they're the supplier of the lathe. Um, I got in touch with them when I realised that there was an issue with the lathe. And straight away they were straight on to Charnwood who's the manufacturer um, I had given all the information about um, what I thought was the problem what we, what it was doing they agreed that it was the control module and they agreed to just send me out a brand new one now we did discuss whether a replacement lathe was needed or just a replacement control unit it's a very heavy piece of kit this it came on a pallet which meant I had to organize the uplift and then we had to get it sent back and then they had to send a new one a lot of messing around so, what we decided was, and what we agreed upon, was just to send me the control unit and I'll fit it myself. Um, as I said, you know, it's it's plug, it's a couple of screws, a plug, um, and away you go, and put it back on again. Um, I took the motor off, purely and simply just to give me better access um, for cutting away some of that um, insulating uh, tape. And that was the only reason I took that off, and that was the doddle to put back on again. Um, Repairing these things is fairly simple if you've got a little bit of nous about you, if you've got a little bit of brains, you know, have a little thing, have a look at how it all goes together and you shouldn't have any problems. Anyway guys, that's me back up and running so I can get some more pens done for the market this weekend, it's my last market for the year. Um, I've got a couple of orders to fulfil so I'm glad that it's arrived today. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one and I'll see you soon. Take care, bye.